Thank you, Dr. Sanchez and committee. Thanks for the invitation to speak. These are my disclosures relative to this talk. So a little background. Um, up to 40 percent of all triple A's we know involve the iliac segment. And hypogastric occlusion has traditionally been required in up to 20 percent of these patients. And although there is certainly debate about this, I would argue the sequela to this is not so benign, in fact. Buttoclaudication, although not limb-threatening, is common in up to 55 percent of people. Uh, some do improve, but some don't. And if you had talked to those who don't, this can be a real problem. Um, erectile dysfunction, something that's underreported vastly, a big, a big sort of black box, if you ask me, with this uh, pathology, does exist. And although uh, less common, the uh, colonic and spinal cord ischemia can be catastrophic. There are various techniques uh, that exist for preserving internal iliac artery flow, and I will uh, hopefully convince you that the new uh, iliac side branch devices are the way to go. Um, a little review. This is a meta-analysis of the effect of um, hypogastric exclusion in patients undergoing EVAR. These were 61 non-randomized studies that evaluated in 15 percent of these patients required sacrifice of the internal iliac artery. And you can see here that buttock claudication occurs in roughly 26 percent when unilateral internal iliac artery is sacrificed and 38 percent when bilateral. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it suffices to say that many of these people require bilateral um, um, sacrifice, and this uh, does increase significantly your risk of uh, complications such as claudication or erectile dysfunction. And when we do have a uh, progression of disease at, into the common iliac artery, uh, we see that there are actually increased risks of complications and secondary procedures required. Uh, in this study, two groups, the majority of patients fit into group one with suitable distal uh, seal zones, and in group two, 24 patients with um, aneurysms extending to the bifurcation of the iliac artery. And you can see the results here that actually AAA-related complication free survival at five years, which much lower in uh, group two compared to group one, and secondary intervention free survival in group one versus group two are shown here. You can see you need much more secondary interventions when you have aneurysms extending to the bifurcation. This is sort of common sense, I suppose. These are two examples of some of the commonly employed techniques to salvage or preserve internal iliac artery flow. The bell-bottom technique we're all uh, aware, uh, familiar with, and the sandwich or double barrel technique shown on the right. Each of these, I think, are fairly um, uh, sort of rudimentary and, and unsophisticated ways of preserving the flow, and, and we do the best with what we have. Um, the bell-bottom technique, although there's some short-term data suggesting there's some durability there, I think that uh, it, it really um, it violates the, the cardinal rule that we want to land in normal iliac arteries, normal aorta, normal iliac arteries, and uh, the sandwich or double water, we've heard about the gutter problem that, it, that is, uh, plagues this as well. So what about iliac branch devices? I want to just spend some time talking about two, two devices, the cook and the gore. Uh, the cook is a little half step behind the gore because it does not have FDA approval in this country. Um, it is widely uh, commercially available, however, in Europe and, and South America. And these two devices are similar, but they're different as well. The Cook device shown here, again, not commercially available. It's a module construction similar to the Gore device. And essentially, it's, a, it's an iliac limb with a side branch that's sewn onto it. And why is that important? Because it's a much smaller device compared to the Gore. Uh, it, it has its advantages and disadvantages that we'll talk about. It's a slightly larger profile, 20 French required. Um, compared to 16 French for the Gore. This is a busy slide showing some of the order forms for this Cook device, and I just want to point out the 14 millimeter uh, docking stent at top um, that, uh, can flare out to 17 millimeter and an 8 millimeter branch, side branch, and uh, it does come in two lengths as shown here, but I'll point out that um, these two lengths still have a, uh, a very short hypogastric docking limb there. And why is that important? If you, uh, one of Roy Greenberg's sort of uh, pet projects was this helical limb. This is unfortunately something that's been shelled by Cook, but the, the rationale behind it is that this side branch was too short, he felt, uh, and, and provided too tenuous of an overlap between the hypogastric branch and the, and the branch, uh, uh, the main body of the branch. So how about the gore? The gore, as I mentioned, is in fact FDA approved uh, recently in, um, and has uh, off-the-shelf components as well. It's a lower 16 French delivery system compared to the 20 French in the Cook pre-cannulated uh, hypogastric uh, branch. Um, and this is a schematic of the device itself. You'll notice that this is not a, a, just a simple limb with a side branch sewn onto it. This is a 23 millimeter uh, main body there compared to the 14 millimeter stent of the Cook. It has its own uh, Viabon uh, hypogastric branch as opposed to the Cook, which uses an atrium. 
Um, I think that's probably one of the things that's slowing it down in, in getting it to market is this uh, mixing and matching of, of the atrium with the cook. Um, and you can see when we uh, compare the two devices, and I just spent a little bit of time here, there are uh, pros and cons to each. You can see the cook on the left-hand column has certain requirements. You'll notice that it requires a slightly smaller interlinear artery diameter compared to the Gore, which is up to 13.5. Um, it requires a, um, a slightly smaller common lake artery diameter compared to the Gore, which requires a slightly more robust common lake artery perhaps to accommodate that larger device. Importantly, in the Gore, we need a, a, a length of 165 millimeters from the renal to the bifurcation, and this can become a problem, especially if we're talking about bilateral cases. And I'll try to present the case tomorrow, a case presentation of a bilateral iliac uh, uh, branch device. This is the deployment sequence for the Gore. You notice on the right that this relies on snaring from the contralateral side to get a through-through fem-fem wire. In, you can use a 12 French sheath. Uh, various manufacturers here, these are f flexible sheaths that can advance from one side to the other and allow for uh, uh, docking into the hypogastric branch. You can see here the different steps of the procedure. We advance the main body of the, of the branch device up one side. It's pre-cannulated, advancing the 12 French sheet from the other side and uh, engaging the branch uh, over the top in this fashion. Um, a nice trick sometimes is to use the 16 French and the 12 French within the 16 French so that you can actually maintain through and through wire through the 16, but selectively use the, the 12 French to avoid wire wrap. A little technical, we can talk about that tomorrow, but you can see here you've gained access into the um, hypogastric branch. I don't think Gore likes this particular side. It looks like a big kink there. This is uh, not what they'd like to show, but in general, when you have a nice uh, robust artery here, you can have a nice result. So this, as I mentioned, is in fact FDA approved, and this is based on uh, the prospective trial, which was presented at VAN two years ago and published in JVS. You can see here 63 patients in 28 centers. I want to point out that uh, 22 of these patients, or 23 rather, had bilateral common lake artery aneurysms requiring coil embolization of one and selective treatment of the other. This was meant for a unilateral um, trial, not bilateral. These are some procedural details, and you'll notice that this is uh, done percutaneously a fair amount of the time. Uh, mostly in, uh, with, with good results here. You can see here this is the patency and the technical success is, is really quite high, at least at six months, uh, with no, en no endo leaks. Again, this is clinical trials, so somewhat strict um, inclusion and exclusion criteria. I want to point out this is one of the slides in that, that paper showing that bilateral cases occur, and again, 25 patients, uh, not a small number. And what this translates into real world experience, uh, we've actually published something on this uh, multi center experience, which uh, time prohibits me from talking about. But um, you'll notice that for bilateral cases, you need a longer length from the renal to the bifurcation compared to the, the unilateral. The Preserve 2 is the Zenith trial, which again is still pending, um, and it's uh, something that uh, was presented at VAM. There is some real world experience with the Cook device here, and here's 140 patients uh, showing um, indications that here. You'll, met, you'll notice here uh, type 1B distal endoleak is something that is sometimes uh, applicable for this technology. Um, some of the complications in this experience, 4.3% had major complications shown here on the top. And I think it's important to point out the technical failures. These are patients who had um, internally like already branch occlusions due to severe angulation. Iliac angu angulation is something to be very wary of in these cases, as well as occlusive disease of the internal iliac itself, could, which can complicate uh, the procedure. But nonetheless, you have good freedom from secondary intervention. Um, you can see lessons learned, another uh, paper here comparing, and this had actually both devices used, although the majority of the cook. You can see that the um, freedom from iliac branch device related intervention is quite good. But 11 patients did develop hypogastric branch occlusions. Most of these are the early uh, perioperative period. Um, longer, uh, farther out, we don't see as much of this. And this tends to be associated with hypogastric artery aneurysms. So this is something to, to be wary of. When you have dilated or ectatic hypogastric arteries, it's not a good seal zone, and it's a poor uh, prognosticator for uh, branch patency. Does one size really fit all? This is a nice paper out of uh, Birmingham and Stanford looking at uh, um, 2,400 aneurysm repairs. You see 99 patients had iliac aneurysms suitable for imaging review. They measured different diameters and lengths. Again, we already talked about the different inclusion criteria, but you can see here that actually only 18% of the Cook and 25% of the Gore would have fit into the IFU. There are a number of reasons they, they fell out of the IFU. In the Cook, it tends to be because you have um, patients who don't actually have 
normal internal like artery diameters. In the gore, it has more to do with the common like artery diameter. But suffice it to say that if you took both together, if you had both available to you off the shelf, only a third would be within IFU. Something to think about. The pitfalls, we mentioned a couple, uh, but the underestimations of the iliac tortuosity and iliac thrombus also can be problematic for distal embolization, graft maldeployment, kinks, et cetera. Inappropriate landing and hypogastric artery aneurysms uh, can, be, can lead to eventual occlusions and, of course, occlusive disease itself. There are different tips and tricks in the interest of time. I won't spend too much time on this, but we can go ahead and coil embolize distal second and third order branches and land more distally. Uh, here's an example of that. Uh, landing, coil embolizing the first order branch and landing more distally. Sometimes we can seal in ectatic arteries, but I think these are cases that are prone to failure. When you have severe stenosis, you can do kissing techniques and, and, and tricks to get in, but sometimes you have such calcification that have a gastric that you just have to abort and coil, as shown here. Cost is an issue, uh, something we won't spend much time on, but you can see these are very costly procedures with multiple components. Um, there are new procedure codes that may minimize that. So in conclusion, you can see that this uh, common iliac artery aneurysm is in fact quite prevalent. Uh, I don't think that internal iliac artery sacrifice is negligible. Uh, and you do have these two devices now that are available to us, uh, at least worldwide. Different pros and cons for each of them. Uh, only a third of them re anatomy really is suitable uh, based on IFU. There are a number of pitfalls, as I described and discussed, but certainly you want to watch for iliac tortuosity that can lead to graft maldeployment, embolization of thrombus. Aneurysms in the internal iliac artery can be a, a, a marker of a failure uh, and occlusion down, down the road. Occlusive disease can make it uh, uh, challenging as well. So conclusion, yes, iliac branch graft is the best solution for iliac artery aneurysms. Thank you.